Hello to everyone, and welcome back to Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Grayson. I'm the other host, Cole. Grayson, this is part two of our Star Wars movie tier list. Yes, it is. If you have not listened or watched the first part, go check that out on whatever platform you so desire. Uh, that kind of explains how we've been going about this in terms of the law of averages and just how we're kind of randomly going through them. So, and just catches you up to speed. So go check out the first part if you haven't, but we've seen an overwhelming amount of support on it. Almost a hundred views on YouTube alone with the first part, which is very, very endearing. So thank you guys for that. Um, and we're very close thank to so 60 much. subs. So that's cool. It's pretty cool. Um, anyone want to get us there? I mean, it'd be pretty cool. You know, if you, you did. could be the, the lucky 60th sub, um, you too could be the 16th. Sub. <laughs> Your finger was so close to the screen right there. <laughs> I know. That's why I laughed. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, uh, without further ado, um, we're going to jump right into this. I will catch you up to speed for audio listeners um, it, because you can't see it. So in S for superb, we have Revenge of the Sith. It is the lone uh, project in S tier. Uh, in for A, now. we have uh, for now, uh, we have Gindy Tartakovsky's uh, 03 Clone Wars, followed by Star Wars Visions and then The Phantom Menace and then Ahsoka. Jumping into B tier, we have Tales of the Jedi, then Solo, The Mandalorian, Bad Batch, The Force Awakens, and then the Clone Wars movie. In C, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi with a gap, and then The Last <laughs> Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. And in D tier, we have nothing yet. Um, who knows what will go in D tier? Who maybe something knows? could change right here and we we decide actually maybe it should go in D tier. Who knows? Um, uh, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to spin the wheel. Spin that wheel. What do we got? Ignore my, the, the just absolute blinding nature of my face for video listeners. Video listeners? Whatever. I don't even care. You know what I meant. Audio watchers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, what do we got? Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a bold claim here. What do you have for me? It's S tier. I think it's mm. S tier. I'd say currently the bottom of S tier, but S tier nonetheless. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say top of A tier. I don't think it fits in S for me. I am a Jedi like my father before me. Is that a line alone brings scene. it to S tier? It's 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 a it's an amazing scene and an amazing line, but it's something what? about the the uh, what? I was gonna say yeah. Tell me what brings it down to A tier for you. Um, I think just and I, I'm not like I'm not saying the Ewok specifically. I love the Ewoks. Um, I'm not. I'm not an. I'm not an Ewok hater. Uh, I just think that for whatever reason, like the the third act of Return of the Jedi felt a little bit. It, it felt a little bit flat comparatively, and I'm only talking about the sections in Endor specifically. Mm -hmm. I think that it's. I think that the Emperor's throne room is done very well, but That's I think fair. Endor feels a little anticlimactic compared to the other two. Uh, it's true. It's true. Um, so I feel like it holistically, it just do, it just doesn't it just doesn't land itself in S for me. But it's mm. at the top of A. I, See, I I like it better than anything in A right now. We we but. are extremely close in in our, our rankings because that that for me that stuff just brings it down to the bottom of S for me. I don't I don't think it's enough yeah. to bring it down a letter grade for me because like but you you are right like. The indoor stuff does it, it. It isn't the the meat of the of the of the turkey leg, whatever, <laughs> of the of the <laughs> pork leg, you know. Where uh, like, yeah, you you want to get back to the throne room stuff. You want to get back to yeah. uh, Palpatine and Vader and Luke. Um, but like, dude, I mean, the opening act is perfection. I hear people. I've it heard is, some, I've heard some people good, say yeah. that there's like some pacing issues with the opening, and I'm like. What? I don't. I don't see it. 
I think like in another universe I could potentially see where they were coming from. Uh, but no, I, I think I think Return of the Jedi is like consistently good. And I mean like the the third act isn't bad by any mm-hmm. means. I just think it doesn't really for, hold up very well with the rest of the film. That's it. For me, it's the it's it's more so the third act isn't the thing, it's more so the middle act. That is kind of like it, you know, you go from this absolute high of, of Luke uh, and Leia and uh, Lando and, and Chewie and, and the rest of the gang re- rescuing Han from Jabba's clutches. Uh, and it's yeah. just this epic, like triumphant kind of, you know, bounce back from from Empire Strikes Back. Like, yes, they got Han back. Um and you get to see Luke in his prime as a Jedi for the first time. Like uh-huh. he's got the all black and you're like, whoa, is he like dark side? Like, you know, a lot happened to him. Is he on the dark side? He even force chokes the Gamorrean guards and you're like, oh, Luke's a little on edgier now. Um, but then, you know, he pulls out that green lightsaber, which was unprecedented mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, and, you know, the da 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 just as he's, you know, so the, the, the skiffs and stuff, it's so good. The opening for me is like one of my favorite things in all of Star Wars, but then it, you know, it kind of paces itself, it goes a little bit slower in the middle act to kind of build up to that third act. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, I love the Battle of Endor. I think it is, is amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah, you make a good point that it's definitely, it, de- it definitely is like, I mean, I'm not sitting there watching it like, oh, can we get back to, you know, uh, all of them? It's just like, it's just like, oh, I'm enjoying this, but I can't wait to get back to the the other stuff. Yeah, it never, um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I never am not having fun while I'm watching it. Um, mm-hmm. I guess it's just st- stuff on S tier and what I plan to advocate for S tier. Every single moment, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Like j- just watching the movie, yeah. just because I, I I love it, you know. Um, yeah. And that's why I think like Return of the Jedi, even though it's it's still great, it just it doesn't quite hit the mark for S for me. But I still think it's at the top mm-hmm. of A. At least that's mm-hmm. how I feel about it right now. Yeah. Um All right. But yeah, hey, you, you, you know, I could me. be. All right. Yeah. Very cool. This is why we have and these discussions. Yes. Indeed. Okay, so we are now putting Return of the Jedi at the top of A tier, which is uh, A great. Mm-hmm. You, you even said it. You were like, you know, well, Return of the Jedi is great. And I was like, well, there you go. Um, and I was, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. It's sitting right there, nice and pretty, above O3 Clone Wars at the very tippity top of A. Um, did I remove it from the wheel? I'm about to. Um, goodbye, Return of the Jedi. I love you. Next up. <laughs> Spin that wheel. Oh, wait. Spin that wheel. You want to take a guess? Just based on my reaction alone. <laughs> Does it happen to be a certain book? Yeah. Yeah. That ha- All right. Well. Yep. This book of Boba Um, <laughs> It's... This this will be our first D tier, everybody. <laughs> it's D tier, and I know I, I I know what we're gonna get flack about. Not that it, we put it in D tier. The fact that we put it below Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, that's fine. That is fine with me. Here's the thing. Yeah. Here I'm gonna make my case for why I'm gonna get just go ahead and put my spiel out here at the Book of Boba Fett. That the show why it is D tier. It is just bleh to me. Is it does. S- it does so much damage, I think, to two different things. And it, it's a fir- first of all, none of the characters in Book of Boba Fett have any depth. And, and and here's what I mean by this. And this doesn't necessarily mean it is a bad thing, but it just doesn't hit for me. It kind of feels like a kid in his bedroom who got a bunch of action figures and made his own story set after Return of the Jedi about Boba Fett. And it's not very good. <laughs> like, you know, like oh, the fact that Boba Fett like doesn't really do anything in the whole show. Like he like he doesn't really do anything cool or epic, especially to the caliber of Mando season two until like the end of the show. And even then, it doesn't even reach the peaks of Boba Fett in Mando. Mando season two it's chock full of characters that are very random and don't make sense again Boba Fett's getting thrown around all the time and then we get to the Mandalorian episodes those episodes alone are great I love those episodes why are they in a show called the book of Boba Fett it's also a limited series right because it was only it was only six or eight episodes something like that I think I want to say I want to say it was like Seven? six episodes. Let, 
Let me let me look it up. Yeah, yeah, look it up. Um, yeah, like I mean, when the Mando episode happened, I was stoked. I I could not be more excited. What those episodes Seven. end up doing to the Mandalorian season three, in my opinion. I mean, in my opinion, it really sabotaged Mando season three because they tried. They yeah. they were like, "How can we get Grogu back as quick as possible with Din Djarin? Yeah, it's yeah, just it, so, stuff like that that I'm like, it just. And I, I finished it, and I was like, "Man, that was like kind of a wasted project." Mm-hmm. Yeah. It. Uh, I. I mean, I 100 agree with you. It felt like a waste of time. It felt like a waste of potential for the character because when he was reintroduced in Mando season two I was ecstatic I was so happy and his presentation in that was really well done top and best. then they at the end of Mando season two they're like Book of Boba Fett limited series coming out I'm like whoa yeah whoa like out of nowhere I got so excited and then we were given a seven episode miniseries which is fine but two out of those seven episodes one of them Boba isn't even in it and the one after that, Boba is at the very end, and he doesn't say a word. Yeah, he he doesn't have a single line. Yeah. Um, and not to mention he he gets. I mean, pardon my French. The man gets his ass kicked throughout the entire show. Yeah. Do, and okay, are there some cool moments? Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some cool moments. I think episode one and two were like all things considered kind of solid. I think uh, I think Boba riding a Rancor, awesome. We love that. I love seeing Boba and Mando fighting together. That was also cool. Um, Black Chrysanthemum, getting him in live action, awesome. But it felt like a waste of potential. It felt like there was something that that could have been great, and somehow they fumbled the bag, like su supremely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It just bothers me. Um, and I mean, like it, Grayson already it's... brought up the, the the point of like how it took away. Uh, something that would have been fantastic to see in Mando season three, um, mm -hmm. which was, you know, the reuniting between uh, Mando and Grogu. Um, and, you know, brings in confusion for, for fans who didn't see Book of Boba Fett. They, they watch Mando season two. They're like, oh, Grogu's leaving. And then season three starts with them reunited already. It's like, what? The, uh, what? the episode, uh, like Return of the Mandalorian, imagine if that was the the opening of Mando season three. That's what it should like, have been. I know you and I had this conversation before. I don't even know if it was on this show, but imagine like Mando season three starts with the return of the Mandalorian. We get a couple episodes of him just being on his own and like really just struggling and not, not having his purpose. And then we have an episode of Grogu training with Luke and you know, there being some uncertainty in there and then they end up reuniting, you know, like that would be, yeah. I feel like that would be really good because they, I mean, yeah, I mean that, that, that could, you could spend a whole season on that. And then the end of it, uh, be the, uh, the acknowledgement that, okay, it's time to go to Mandalore. And then season four is Mandalore, you know? Yes. Um, it's, it was such a, a stupid fast track to get Grogu and Mando back together. And they did it in a show that basically, I mean, I, and I, I don't want to say ruined for Boba Fett because they didn't ruin his character, but they significantly detracted from him. Like it, yes. it's, it's yes. just, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I just, it, and, and here's what I'll say back only to waste it. Y yeah. Yeah, and, and here's why I put it below Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. I know those movies are universally, not universally, but mostly like the most hated films in Star Wars or projects in Star Wars. Here's why I put them below that. At least half of The Last Jedi, I'm like, I like this. This is cool. There's really cool, um, you know, commentary on the Force and the light and the dark. And there's there's depth to these characters, especially with Ben Solo yeah. and Rey or Kylo Ren and Rey. Um, and we get to Rise of Skywalker, like... Again, there's still really cool stuff and messages being presented with and different character arcs. There's depth yeah. to these things, despite the flaws that were are within. That's why they're meh. The Book of Boba Fett, I think of it and I go, bleh. Like that's why it's going in D. So, like. well, yeah, with with the Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, at the very least, there is a a, a modicum of 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 care. You know that that you can tell that was put into the project, mm -hmm. and again, like even even though you you persuaded me to kind of like 
knock Last, Last Jedi down a couple pegs. Like, I really don't think all that poorly upon Last Jedi anymore. Like, there, there's some parts in the movie that I don't like, but ultimately I'm like, eh, all right, you know, as, as a flick, not bad. But, yeah. like, Book of Boba Fett just bothers me because it feels like a, a, a gross misuse of the IP. Mm-hmm. Um, and... It's just remember? disappointing. Like it was, yeah. <laughs> remember when we we stayed up to watch? We watched every single episode. Or not oh every single God. episode. Once we moved in together, we watched every episode every night. And that was at the time when Disney Plus stuff came out at three three a.m. The like yeah, and it it, it sucked. Uh, <laughs> but we we <laughs> stayed up for the finale, and we just looked at each other and we were like, that was not worth it. Like, <laughs> I I cannot. <laughs> I cannot explain the the visceral f- gagging feeling I felt in my body when the last shot of the show was Boba walking with the people he had met throughout the show. They say something and then they all laugh as the camera just pans off onto the twins. <laughs> like that stupid like sitcom B ending. It felt so corny, and I'm like, guys. Boba is a murderer. <laughs> like, 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 like he's, the whole, he's that, supposed the, to be. His arc was that like he killed Cad Bane and like went into like more like he finally like gave into more of his like savage instincts. But even then, like that moment, I was like, it didn't really hit as hard. I was like, eh, okay, like that's the only real arc in that show. Like. Yeah. Involving Boba Fett. And even then, but then yeah, he's just sitting there laughing with the speeder bike gang and Chris Anton and Whatever, man. Boba is a B A M F dude. Yeah, bro. Bo- Boba's a bamf, and, yeah. and and the entire show, he's getting his ass kicked. Yeah, and he's be and he's being shown <laughs> that he's, in terms of leadership, he's weak. Yeah, and that is not Boba Fett at all, yeah. man. I mean, Boba all like, I mean, listen, if we want to talk about his demise and Return of the Jedi. And maybe you could say that that is Boba Fett. Yeah. Uh, may, like, he, he makes some dumb decisions, but you can't show us how he is in Mando Season 2 when he gets his armor back and then just show this. And then also have sh- moments in the show that, that are contradictory to itself. You show me a scene that Boba says, we have, to, we have to sneak into the palace discreetly. No one can know that I'm alive. And then 10 minutes later, he grabs a small droid by the throat and says, do you know who I am? I'm Boba Fett. And the droid is basically just like, just don't kill me. Yeah, you know? dude, like, the amount of times he says, I am Boba Fett throughout the entire show. I'm Boba Fett. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, well, what is, what is that worth these days? Yeah. You, you might as well just say that your size snoodles you know yeah. no no the, no, no dissing on, on the snoodle fans but the one redeeming arc that i will give and i honestly forgot about it until you mentioning this is like i do really like his little arc with the tuscans i think that's really cool that's so cool yeah that's so cool so what happened I don't know. you know it it, it was the, i mean honestly it's the same kind of thing with kenobi where it feels like they wrote a solid beginning and well, not a solid ending in, Boba, in Book of Boba Fett's case. <laughs> and then they were just like, and then they were just like, we have to, we got to stretch it out. It's got to be, it's got to be a series. We got to make more money off of it. Yeah. You know? Um, mm, I, I, I wish Book of Boba Fett didn't exist, so I could still think in the mystique of like, oh, what's Boba doing in the universe now? Um, Boba Fett, I'm sorry, he's a very troubled character. I want to like him so bad, guys, but like. Disney doesn't want me to. <laughs> he, he's just he he's being so grossly misused. And the problem is that it like Mandalorian like Din Din Djarin is basically the the new canon version of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. At least like in season one, they adopted you know Boba's exact same vibe that he gave off. That yep. was what they were trying to replicate. And so I suppose in that essence, they were like, well, what do we have? What, what are we supposed to do with this character now? Now, I don't have any problem. and this is just a Book of Boba Fett episode now, I don't have any problems with them making Boba, like, like the, the new daimyo of, of Tatooine, like, that sounds really cool, uh, but the execution is just done super poorly. I, I could tell the moment that I knew that, that, like, something was wrong with the show was, it, I, it was, like, in the first to third episode that Boba shows up, and he's just like, I'm the daimyo now. And then, like, everyone's just like, no, you're not. Um, the thing is, is, like, 
why is he just walking around saying that he's the guy when you're not that guy, pal? Like, yeah. he, he has to earn that. He has to earn that. He he knows that he can't just walk around saying, yeah, it's me now. I'm the new daimyo. It's just, it shows just kind of overall foolishness. Yeah. Um, it, it's And it's like, there's really cool ideas of like, when the ending of Mando season two happened and you get that reveal of the Book of Boba Fett, like, this is not what I envisioned that show to be. Like, I envisioned it no. being, you know, him taking trips to Nar Shadda and like, you know, having to fight off on different criminal syndicates because, you know, the huts we're reading Plagueis right now, some mild mild little things in there, like they set up what how the huts got onto Tatooine and mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. And it's like they ruled Tatooine for a long time. Boba is now like uh, he's he is branching off the path of, of mere bounty hunter to crime lord. Such a cool idea. And then, yeah, yeah, he's he's going around just getting beat up and then being like, I am Boba Fett. I am the Daimyo, like a Bantha. Bah. Like, he's just like, you know, it, like he, <laughs> it's like a meme version of his character. Like, I just... <sighs> we're getting... We're, like we're like being you so said negative. before, he's literally, he's literally like an action figure where you press a button, he says, I'm Boba Fett. Yeah. I'm the Daimyo. It's, a you kid, know, like, it's, like a, it's like a kid who doesn't know how to, like, make dialogue or plots. It's just him, like, I'm the Daimyo. There, oh, yeah, like... <laughs> There, there, there's no, there's no depth there. Yeah, but there's so much depth in Man in Mando season two in the one scene that uh, he he discusses with with Din about about the ownership of of the armor. You know. Yeah. Because because Django was a foundling and and I am his son. You know. So oh, when he they're, gets they're, into that fight with Casca Reeves and uh at, yeah. yeah and he's they're like oh like your donor or whatever like you know they're kind of roasting him and he just like he just like literally kicks her to the floor like you know it's like that sort of stuff is so cool it just it the book of Boba Fett version of of his character just feels like a different character yeah and i think it it honest i mean it it upset tamura morrison too like he he specifically said that he felt like you know he was kind of being underused in the show mm -hmm. Um, like he, he he had some things to say about the fact that there were two episodes in his show called The Book of Boba Fett that he's not in. Yeah. Um, and then also apparently he was uh, he was so they were supposed to start something for either Mando season three or uh, Book of Boba Fett season two, and then he was told that like they were being put on the back burner for now. Mm -hmm. So and this is what makes me mad. They this happens with a lot of corporations I've noticed where they churn out an absolute garbage product and then they take away from that oh i guess we shouldn't have that character you know be in it anymore or we shouldn't uh like have multiplayer in this game anymore no the thing the reason why it's bad is because you did it poorly yeah um that's that's it and it's that it's literally I, that I just, meme of like uh eric andre like you know where he's like shoots Hannibal <laughs> Buress, who killed Hannibal. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, what is what does the quote say? What does the meme like? Uh, he well, he yeah, he's he shoots he shoots Hannibal, and then he looks to the screen. He's like, who killed Hannibal? Yeah, it's li like that's it's there. It's literally Disney is Eric Andre, and he's just like, oh my, God, like who did like I can't believe like people don't like this. Like it's like so, why don't people like Boba Fett? We gave you Bo Bo Boba Fett show. Yeah, I all I can say. Unfortunately, it's D tier. It breaks my heart. I literally have a, a Boba Fett poster right there. I love you Boba do. Fett as a character, um, but it is unfortunately D tier. All I can say, I either need a season two or I just need him to be back in canon in something that's good so I can get this taste out of my mouth. Yeah. I, Thank you very I much. I think they could, they could, if they do a season two and they did it right, they could bring it back. My pitch, let the, the Pike Syndicate, or not the Pike Syndicate, but like, let someone challenge him to his leadership or completely like be like, oh, okay, you know, we're not going to just fight over control. We're going to wipe out Tat or not Tatooine, but wipe out Moss Eisley or, or have something like yeah. Fennec Shand betrays him because she wants like to be the daimyo, you know, stuff like that. Add subterfuge, add plot, add anything. Like <laughs> he was threatened. He was threatened by those two huts in the show. What and happened that to that? Like yeah, yeah, that was like rumored to be like something that was gonna happen. Nothing happened with when that. that so happened, like, if they want I was that to like, be I was two, like, oh, the huts are coming back with an iron fist. This is gonna get really cool really quickly, and then it just didn't. Yeah, it just didn't. 
Anyway, we've dwelled long enough on the book of Boba Fett. I'm sorry, we're, we are a little butt hurt by this show, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we we're talked not, more about it than I thought we would. We yeah, well, we had to get our frustrations out, and I, I think we had to make our case as to why it was yeah. beneath the other projects that some people like considerably less but that's just that's just us man hopefully season two bumps it up to a couple letter grades if they if they do one we'll see we'll see it's fair to give everything it's due mm -hmm. all right we're sitting at about seven projects left um nice and simple uh, this answer may surprise you as well for me, but we have the classic Star Wars A New Hope. All right. Uh, Here, you know, I think we may disagree on this a little bit. I Here's the thing. Maybe. Who knows? Typically, I don't think I would say this, but really I've been dwelling on it lately. And I really do think that A New Hope deserves S tier. Real, like genuinely, I agree. Oh, I was gonna perfect. say S here. Okay, <laughs> perfect. I mean, it's the um, it, it's I, the OG. It started it all. It's it it is so influential as a movie, um, and I mean, it is it, it's it's the iconic Star Wars movie. It's mm -hmm. it's Star Wars. It's S tier. Uh, yeah. There you go. I I don't need to say anything more. Well said. Quintessential Star Wars, baby. Literally. So we're below Revenge of the Sith. For now, I that's, that's yeah, what I well, think for, as for well. Now. Yeah. Um. Perfect. So we spent so much time on Book of Boba Fett, and then it was like <laughs> this was like we don't need to say anything. <laughs> You're just like Esther. I'm like yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Oh. We got real Ooh. close there to something else. Okay. What do we got? Star Wars Rebels. I I think I'm gonna hand you the reins on this one first. Why? Why would you? Do? I'm just kidding. Um, I just think it's really. I, start the way, when I think Star Wars Rebels, I think Grayson. Oh, well, thank you. When I think Grayson, I think Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> go go ahead. Um, go ahead. so I should go ahead and say that I've only seen Star Wars Rebels one time, which is actually surprising. My it is a goal of mine in the new year. By the way. Merry Christmas, Merry belated Christmas and happy holidays to any who ce celebrate. Just wanted to say that. Seconded. Um, so it's hard to have kind of a recent judgment on Rebels, but here's what I say for, or here's what I will say from what I know, what I remember, and just how I feel about the show in general. Um, I think the show is a little more, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if I would say more inconsistent than Clone Wars. I would just say it has it has a weird thing about it where it's it, it is definitely more childish at least in the beginning compared mm -hmm. to Clone Wars. We haven't got to Clone Wars yet, but we will. Um the the highs in Rebels are so high. Some of my favorite in all of Star Wars. Um mm -hmm. What I think holds this show back is, you know, the animation style is not really for everyone. I, w I would say that the Clone Wars animation style is, is I don't really know anybody who dislikes the Clone Wars animation. Um, Rebels has a very spe specific and unique art style, one that I like. Um, it uses a lot of, uh, it elongates things and also shortens things, and it, and it tries to kind of emulate a lot of those Ralph McQuarrie designs, which I think is really cool, and I think is really underappreciated. Um, so I think the animation gets a bad rap, but I think what you can say about Rebels is it it isn't like peaks and valleys of like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. it's just, it, it really kind of, it starts off kind of, kind of slow, and you know, it's, you know, it starts off good but it's obviously made for for younger kids at least at the time and then yeah. as the show goes on it just gets it just gets better it feels like a steady incline uh, it feels like climbing up a mountain um that being said because of those early early seasons and then those you know certain episodes and in certain later seasons that are just kind of like they seemingly feel what what someone would say filler i don't know i don't personally don't think they're filler uh, I think they all all those characters that are set up in filler episodes all get utilized by the end of the show in a very meaningful way. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to say, 
I think I'd put it in A, right above Ahsoka. I think that's where I'd put it. Well, uh, I'm saying wow, because that's exactly where I was thinking about putting it. Really? So, yeah. I've, I've, I've come around to, uh, I've, I've come around to Rebels. Um, I don't think it's S tier. Um, mm. I was thinking like, I was thinking, yeah, I think Rebels sits at, at low A. Um, a lot of people will, will bring the term filler up, uh, and just throw it around. But I think people really just are lacking the, the comprehensive understanding of, of, of an episodic TV show. Um, <laughs> yeah. and there's a, yeah, there, there's a real difference between filler and, you know, just kind of the, the fun episodes that bring about a, a, a meaning that, that is still important to, mm-hmm. to the themes of the show. Um, and I think, I think Rebel satisfies that. Uh, obviously, you know that um, I had some, some qualms with, like, the, the early parts of Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. Um, I think it really did get pretty childish here and there, but I don't think that is also very fair grounds to judge something on its worth, on whether or not it, like, is childish. Um, and so, therefore, I think, like, if I were to critique it based off of that, I would say, like, maybe tonally confused, <laughs> you know? Cause, yeah. and, I mean, Cl- Clone Wars does the same thing. Like, Clone Wars super early is, like, very childish. And then, you know, season four, season five, you got mall decapitating people. So, like, there is there, there there's some differences there. But, like, I think with with Rebels, um, it was it was kind of jarring at first and it felt a little inconsistent. However, you are right in that just like all the other shows, it just gets better. And I'm talking about the other animated shows. Um, all of the live shows seem to have this terrible, <laughs> not all of them, but but the other live shows seem to have this this terrible tendency to just regress as they go on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm satisfied with putting Rebels, uh, low A tier right now. Yeah. Um, cause I, I think it's, I think it's still a great show. I think it, mm-hmm. I, I look back on it fondly now. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm excited um, to go back and watch it. Um, if maybe, maybe if you watch it too, we can do a, do a retrospect on it. It's been a while. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, there's, yeah, I remember you pointed out to me like or in, you know, I think it was literally maybe like a year after Rebels had finished, you were, you were like, yeah, there's some parts that are just like really silly and it's like, that's true. And I, I think that is silliness is maybe a, is a valid critique. I don't think child, childish, because there's some things that like, it was a show for Disney XD. Yeah made for kids to get into star wars you know like that you gotta appeal to the demographic in a way but those kids grew up fast man like and the show did too um yeah so yeah i'm gonna go and plop that in there right above ahsoka um i love star wars rebels also it has kanan jarrus and he's the best star wars character of all time i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i just love saying that uh all right Let's uh, let's see. Not much left now. Only five. Well, it only makes sense. Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the television show. Uh, I would. Sh- shall I? Shall I begin? You shall. Um. So I'm. I'm just gonna straight up say, and hey, I'm more than willing to have this an open discussion. I think Clone Wars belongs in S tier. Um, mm. And the the reason why I say this is because in terms of uh, animation, story, world building, and like just what it does for the Star Wars universe as a whole, it's nothing less than an achievement. Um, it has a great deal of parts of it that has the same problems Rebels does in the beginning where, you know, it's a little inconsistent, kind of a little, little silly. Um, but it it is not like uh, the, the Mandalorian where we said that, or, or like T- Tales of the Jedi, where we said that, that the highs do not make up for the lows. Mm-hmm. The highs of Clone Wars blow the lows out of the water. It's true. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of nuts. And, like, you could talk to anyone that's watched The Clone Wars and they'll tell you, like, their favorite arc. Um, I just think that as a Star Wars project, it is just, it's so, it is a a net positive for the Star Wars community (laughs) and its universe. Um, And so I would say, like, low S tier 
Um, that's just personally how I feel about it. I have a I have a deep connection to the show. Yeah, see, it's interesting. I, I'm I'm kind of torn here. Clone Wars is my favorite Star Wars show, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Um. I, you know, maybe I watch Rebels and that changes, but, you know, Clone Wars also serves a lot of what happens in Rebels. Um, and yet mm-hmm. we've, we've talked about this before, like the Clone Wars, it has something for everybody. Like there is, yeah. you know, whether you have uh, your clone centric episodes or your Ahsoka centric episodes or, you know, your, your Maul and your Sith are, you know, separatists or your political episodes or your Jedi centered episodes, mm-hmm. bounty hunters. I mean, literally Every single facet of Star Wars that makes Star Wars is in this show. It's so comprehensive. Yes, there are some episodes that are, you know, again, silly. Uh, Maybe not, maybe don't hit as hard as some of those other arcs. But yes, there are a a lot of just incredible arcs from uh, from Umbara to uh, Fives discovering the inhibitor chips, to the wrong Jedi, Mm -hmm. to the Siege of Mandalore. Which, if we were just doing the Siege of Mandalore alone, I'd put that... Uh, literally neck and neck with Revenge of the Sith. That's how good it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's insanely good. There's not, like, there's episodes in that show that I think people give a bad rap, but honestly, like, I enjoy them. Like, I love them for that charm. Um, yeah. And and so, originally, I don't think I had, to, I, I, you know, before we started, I don't think I would have put Clone Wars in S tier, but, like, just for what it does, just for Star Wars as a whole, uh, and this kind of connects back to The Last Jedi of like what that movie did for the Star Wars franchise as a whole, you know, bumped it down a letter grade for you or significantly. It was like, yeah, you're right. What Clone Wars does for Star Wars as a whole almost bumps it up a letter for me. Yeah, it's it's kind of nuts. I mean, like if you want to unpack it just at, at its base traits, at what it does for Star Wars, it gives us Ahsoka. It brings back Asaz Ventress. It, it ultimately like makes the 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 clones and the tragedy of the clones so much better it contextualizes them Mm -hmm. it it uh it like ties together the loose threads of the prequel trilogy it makes anakin's fall more believable yeah um there's there's so many things in there that it just i mean honestly like it i think the clone wars show made that as a child made the clone wars like my favorite era like like the the prequel there, I think it you know that's what it did for me. I I just think I, God, I completely forgot <laughs> it brought back Darth Maul. I mean, yeah, in the coolest I, I mean, way possible. In the coolest way possible, I just think that it has done so much for Star Wars that it's so, so much good for Star Wars that it would almost be a waste to not put it in S tier. It's true. Um, but you know. I I I agree with you. You have swayed me. All right. Um, okay. My, Perfect. I think for me, I, I mean, it's got. I think it's got to go below a new hope, though. Uh, no, that's. I, I think at present it's lowest here. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that because again, we you know we didn't talk a whole lot about a new hope, but again, like it is Star Wars. That is what's like. Yeah. That is the definition yeah, of Star, it's just Wars. Star Wars. Like, I mean, really, if, at the end of the day, like I know people would show different things, but like if you had to show one Star Wars movie, you would just show a new hope, and that would be it. Like, yeah. it's a complete film. Um, sweet. Well, Clone Wars, the show is going right behind A New Hope in S tier. Um, cool. I'm going to go ahead and organize these real quick. Just just for the final four that we have down, which we have some interesting interesting leftovers here. <laughs> yeah, what, a, what an interesting matchup we've got. Um, okay. Okay. Roll that it's, wheel. It's it's rolling. It's rolled. The Empire Strikes Back. Is this even a question at this point? I mean, it's top of S. It's top of S. There you go. Uh, here's what here's what I'll say. The only critique that I will give this movie. It is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. It is your favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Yes, sir. I think it's the greatest sequel of all time. I'll stay by, I'll yes, stand by that. The literally the only critique I have with this film and it does not knock it down a letter grade. It doesn't even knock it down a full notch because uh, I think there are more things that you could break down from Revenge of the Sith um, is that the it's literally just one thing and that's Luke and Leia kissing. That's the only that's my only critique with the oh, film. Yeah. This, <laughs> and and I give it grace because one 
At the time, they didn't know they were siblings. Not just the characters, but George Lucas himself. He didn't intend them for being uh, siblings. That's why people say, like, oh, thing, the, you know, the sequel trilogy should have been planned out. Yes, I agree, it should have. But you also have yeah. to think the original trilogy was not planned out either. Um, you know, Leia was also doing it to appease Han, you know, or to try to to try to piss Han off, basically. Um, yeah, which makes her equally toxic in a sense. But yeah, you know, that's that, that's another topic for another day. But it's a Leia thing, you know, and yeah. uh, and and I love her for it. And so um, that's literally my only critique. Um, I think I have a few minor critiques that that put Revenge of the Sith just behind Empire Strikes Back. Um, but they are the best of their respective trilogies, in my humble opinion. By far. And clearly yours as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're 100% right. Alrighty. Empire Strikes Back. The last it's good to have, member... It's good to have more stuff in, uh, in S tier. <laughs> it's uh, more than I thought would be, which I'm happy about. Um... What were you going to say, the last member? The last uh, member of the original trilogy has made it onto the list. Oh, yes. We have three projects. Two are very closely connected. One, not at all. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And there it is. There's there's one scene that connects them both, but, you know. That is true. I didn't think about that. Well, that's what we're talking about is Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones, baby. Oh, man. Attack of the He'll, Clones is definitely this, the, as they say, the, the the redheaded stepchild of the of the prequel trilogy. Yeah, some people would disagree. People, some people would say the Phantom Menace under Attack of the Clones. I don't know what they're on. That's um, true. That's true. I remember a little that. story because we've got we've got some time here. Um, I remember I was in my freshman year of college and and they were doing. Uh, I was in a I don't remember. It was like some sort of class for my major at the time that I didn't end up sticking with but I remember I was in the class and they were talking about or he was talking about how one of Google's like answers on your interview is like to gauge how like creative you are and it's like like I don't know if this is true or not but it was like this is going to sound really dark but it's like I think it was like uh actually don't know if this is true this is what he said I'm just going to say this is what he said what I remember that Okay. They, they put a frog in a blender the, imaginarily like they don't actually do it and they're like uh get the frog out of the blender without like opening it or something it's something like that something crazy like that right uh or like how would you get it out or like whatever and i remember being like okay but then what connects to that he, he was like if i was hiring somebody my question would be what what is the worst star wars movie at the time the the Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker were not out yet, um, mm-hmm. and I said, "Attack of the Clones," uh, and yeah. he, and he was like, "Incorrect, it's the Phantom Menace." And I was like, "You're gonna really let the love story, uh, you're gonna let Jar Jar trump the the horrible love story for you," which connects me to my point here is that I love half of this movie. With Obi Wan yeah. and the yeah. Cameron Owens and Jango Fett, but even that stuff has its flaws. But let's go back to the other the half that I don't really like. And granted, I really enjoy watching Attack of the Clones. I'll admit that, but I'll also admit it's like one of the weakest Star Wars movies ever. Um, it is. The love story between Anakin and Padme is just horrendous. Like it's so it's- bad. <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> and it I makes me want to cry every time I watch it. It's, but not in like a, oh, it's so beautiful way. It's it's a, oh, it's so disgusting. It's just so, it's the epitome of cringe. Like it's just. Oh my God. <laughs> and, so, so, sorry, my lady. <laughs> I mean, you've got the sand quote from like, you've grown more beautiful. I mean, or like, you know, stuff like that. Right. I love Hayden Correct Christensen. me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Is there isn't there a moment when they're in Naboo overlooking the sea and he's rubbing her back saying her skin is so smooth? Yeah. Does he yeah, say that? Yeah. What? It, that, the hell? Well, because he's he's that's how he leads into the sand thing. He's just like it's so smooth, not coarse and rough and irritating like sand or whatever. Uh, like I, it's. I, I I am so. I, I just hate it. I just hate it. It's just you can. It's. George Lucas does not know how to write lo- like that love story right there that he just didn't. He needed some help with the dialogue. All right. The seeds were there, but it just didn't hit. 
that's the part that's the part that the main problem area is up here <laughs> like that's the <laughs> that's the stuff that i don't really don't like in that film again i will put on attack of the clones and i will i will enjoy enjoy it very dearly but i will be the first to admit it's bad that part is bad then we get into the obi-wan stuff i love that stuff i think it's so cool but the reason why it happens is really dumb i will always yeah. say this there's that that popular clip of cosmonaut variety hour where he's like oh, yeah, uh where yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like so emperor palpatine wants padme dead but he doesn't want to do it himself so he hires count dooku to kill padme but he doesn't want to do it himself so he hires jango fett to kill padme but he doesn't want to do it himself so he hires zam wessel <laughs> to kill padme but she doesn't or he doesn't want to do it herself so then she sends robots to go kill Padme. But, <laughs> but if you want to get really technical, they send bugs to go kill her because they don't want to do it themselves, you know? And it's like that whole thing right there. And then it leads to they chase Zam Wessel down. And then Jango Fett decides to shoot her with a traceable poison dart. He And they <laughs> see him fly away. And he couldn't, I'm like, if you're going to be seen, Django, just shoot her with a, like a yeah, blaster if, bolt. If you're, if you're going to kill her, just shoot her. Like, like, I mean, at, at that point, because it's clear, I mean, they, they clearly see him fly away. Yeah. And it's like the Camino oh dart God, thing dude. would be okay if they didn't see him. If you don't see him fly away, if you cut to a shot of like a silhouette of a Mandalorian, right? And he just snipes her with the dart. You don't see it. You just see the, the glint in the, the visor. But but Anakin and Obi-Wan, they don't sent they can't sense where he's at. It hits him with the, the dart. He thinks he gets away with it, right? That is that's how you do that. Otherwise, if you he gets seen and flies away, yeah, just shoot her with your blasters, man. Like that whole thing is a big problem, you know, and, and it kind of creates the problem going forward. Again, I give it grace because I think it's a fun time and I, I really do enjoy Attack of the Clones. And I think there are really redeeming moments to it. Like there's things that I really do enjoy, but it, it is it, out of the, the sky, like the not the Skywalker saga out of the, out of the original six. It's, it's problematic. I... It's just it's just really messy, like as a movie. Mm -hmm. There there are some great parts about it, you know, some really enjoyable stuff, like like seeing Yoda wield the lightsaber for the first time. Awesome. I mean, that was that was sick. And and you know, C Christopher Lee is Count Dooku, rest in peace. I mean, like, amazing, you know. Yeah. But yeah, what's I mean, I don't listen, man. I don't know about you. I really find it difficult putting it in b tier no i wouldn't i'd put I, it in, i'd yeah, put it in, I, i'd put it in c because it really is like meh to me like i really like i don't hate it and that is some of my bias like i think if i wasn't yeah. biased to star wars i'd put attack of the clones in d tier but i won't because i actually i really do enjoy watching attack of the clones and that has to be considered yeah <sighs> but but yeah, but I enjoy watching it as like a guilty pleasure kind of sense. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I really like watching the the Camino stuff. But even that is kind of contrived and a little messy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really engaging. I think it's a lot of fun. But I mean, it just feels a little odd. It, listen, all I'm saying is that we have a perfectly cut out space for Attack of the Clones that I think it may fit into because I have my gripes with Obi Wan with with, with the Obi Wan show. But I don't think it's fair to put yeah, Attack of the Clones it, above it, that, that show. That's what I'll say is like I enjoy Attack of the Clones more than Obi Wan Kenobi, but that is only due to my my personal biases. Obi Wan yeah. Kenobi is a more consistent and better written, and and just a less messy project than than Attack of the Clones. I'd, I'd even go as far to say that Obi Wan Kenobi isn't really messy. It just has some weird technical and writing issues. Like it's not it's not messy. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm going to keep this brief, but like Obi-Wan Kenobi, the, the show for that ha has a very strange thing about it where it's not poorly written. It's just that the writing choices are strange, if that makes sense. Like as, as a cohesive written project, it's not written poorly. Mm -hmm. It's just why would you do those things? You yeah. Know? Um, but as for Attack of the Clones, I can't I can't admit that it's well written. I you know, I mean, like when you cut it down to brass tacks, like some of the, some of the main structural parts of it could could maybe be conceived as well written. But everything that's filled in, 
I mean, when, when people give the prequels flack for dialogue, I typically think of Attack of the Clones. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put it like, are we thinking mid C tier? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think we, we have the slot. It's perfect. It was almost like it was meant to be. It's meant to be. Hello, Attack of the Clones. You'll be right there. And I know we're going to get, I'm going to have some friends that are going to be like, bro, how did you put, put Attack of the Clones over The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker? I'm sorry, man. I can have opinions. Okay. Yeah. I, there, there's, there's half of me that wants to put it beneath Last Jedi, but I know that, that, that we already made a decision on that. It's, it's just, just like, it, here's the thing with that. And I'll argue my case. I'll be devil's advocate in a sense is that, yeah. The Last Jedi, again, does a lot of damage to Star Wars. Like, it does... Yeah. It's, like, the things that are negative about it really damage, like, just the, the saga as a whole with, like, the decisions that they made with Luke Skywalker and then just going forward yeah. with Rise of Skywalker, which someone could argue that is Rise of Skywalker's issue. It is in a lot of senses. But, like, you know, it's just... it The, the Attack of the Clones, what you will, set up the Clone Wars, which is... Again, we put it in S tier. Like it, it sets yeah. up a lot of greatness and just a lot of. I mean, also Revenge of the Sith. So, like, it's not without its its merits in a way. Um, yeah. So yeah. Well, I already rolled the wheel when we were discussing. We have Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Okay, this one will actually be interesting. I think this is this is tough for me, in my opinion. It's. It's tough for me too. Personally, I can't decide between low low S or high A. Um, <sighs> so here's the thing: is I'll go ahead and get the negatives out of the way with Rogue One. A lot of the character moments that hit don't really fully hit until you watch until you watch it multiple times and understand the context, or honestly, yeah. read the the prequel novel Catalyst. That does a lot for mm -hmm. that movie, and I have not read that novel, but I know a lot about it, and I know the context. But again, the movie does give you pretty good context, and I think when I watched it for the first time, I was like, yeah, like, Jin didn't hit with me, like, completely, but I like her a lot, and I like their story. The more that I watched it and I picked yeah. up on context clues and stuff like that, I was like, oh... This movie, I mean, you don't really need to read, like, you don't need to read that novel for, I mean, it helps, but, like, it do, it really does a good job of setting up all these characters, uh, and, you know, ultimately, by the end of the movie, I, I think it, it is very emotional, and it, and it, uh, it hits very well, and it just, I mean, it perfectly sets up a new hope, uh, yep. like, 100% flawlessly, you know, and that one, that one flaw of, like, why would the, the Imperials put that exhaust port in the Death Star well yeah. someone inside did it and he wanted that it is, that's just such a great way to, to to take that uh plot hole and go like you know what let's make a movie about it you right. know that that's just that is the perfect way to do that I think uh I think Rogue One I, okay so I'm, I'm probably not gonna put in an S anymore I'm thinking personally I'm thinking A I think that Rogue One is as a project, it's very strong, but I think it definitely serves as a supplemental to A New Hope. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't seen A New Hope, Rogue One's not really... It's probably not going to hit you as 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 uh, harshly, I yeah, guess. Yeah, um, now, like, I mean, I, I, I could be wrong, you know? There are some people that I have known where, like, the first Star Wars movie that they've seen is Rogue One, and they liked it. I mean, it, um, it's not a bad entry point. I mean, I don't think it is as Star Wars-y as classic star wars in a way like i think it ha has a lot more like darker tones and you know it's i, I mean it's an fun. Andor are in the same vein yeah right and and you know that could be considered like a negative i don't consider it a negative i could just consider it a stylistic right. choice um yeah i mean i don't know it's like i i see, look at empire and revenge of the sith and and just a new hope and clone wars and i'm like I love Rogue One. I'm like, I'm like, should it be up there at the bottom with them, or should it be at the top of A? Um. So, I'm personally going to say, I'm going to say top of A. Okay. Just like gut instincts, because Rogue One is really, really good. Um, but I think it just, it is not as. 
I, I, I struggle to think that, that it is as superb as, you know, the superb tier. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is so close. So I think it's, I think it's at the top of a, um, but I don't think it is uh, iconic enough, I guess I would say. Yeah. I mean, or, or influential enough. I don't know. Um, I mean, what I can tell, at least just from this one thing alone, is it, it is easily the best Disney Star Wars film to come out. Um, 100%. Without a 100%. doubt. 100%. Um, <sighs> that's this tough, actually. Because I every time I watch Rogue One, I like it more. That's the thing with me, too. Yeah. <sighs> uh... Uh, okay. Do you want to throw it at low S for now? Yes. Yeah. Let's. When, when we go over the tier, we can reconsider it in case we feel es different. Especially because, I mean, we don't have to even roll the wheel. The last thing we have is Andor. I have some specific yeah. thoughts that might influence where Rogue One goes and where Andor goes. Um, mm, so, okay. yeah. Um, let's put Rogue One bottom of S for now. And we're going to immediately move on to our very final project in the tier list, Andor. Um, I want you to start because Andor is your favorite show. Um, okay. And I believe it is not, uh, it is a fact that, I mean, I, I love Andor, but you love it far more than me. Um, so I'm curious, you being the Andor like the, like the Andor guy on our show where yeah. you think it deserves to be. So I think, I, I think going into this, you knew what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and so here, and, and here's the thing, like when we started this, I wanted to be sure that we were being fair mm -hmm. to, you know, where, where we, where we were placing these things. And I think I'm completely. I, I think it, it is completely fair in putting Andor in S tier. I'm going to get some flack for this. I know it. Mm -hmm. I know that some of our some, some of our friends, Tony. I, I I hear you, man. I I know I know you're wigging out right now that I want to put Andor Andor in S tier. But I had a conversation with you about how much I advocated for it, and I'm going to talk about it again now. Andor is just i mean it, it is superb on s tier a lot of people's issues with andor right now are one they don't think that it is star warsy and two they don't like how purist people are for andor over other things mm -hmm. let me be clear that i do not look at andor and go like this is what star wars should be I think it's better than everything else. Everything else sucks, X, Y, Z. No, I take yeah. a look at it and I'm like, this is a fantastic Star Wars project. When it comes to the, the, the first complaint that people have, which is it's not very Star Wars-y, that brings into question, what is Star Wars to you? Mm -hmm. I think Star Wars is a extremely uh, subjective IP that it can have multiple different meanings to many different people. And for me, Star Wars is many different things. It's it's the it's the whimsy of the original trilogy. It's the the politics and the tragedy of the prequels, but it is also the you know grimy, down in the dark war story that is Rogue One and Andor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rogue One set a precedent that we can have Star Wars stories that have to do with uh like what what goes on in the background mm -hmm. it's essentially the the star wars battlefront of movies where where you're focusing on someone that's on the ground you're not focusing on the big players you're focusing on the little guys um and i think that andor takes rogue one everything that rogue one offered which was uh, a fantastic war story a deep dive into the dark times which is now my personal favorite era as a star wars adult mm -hmm. um and just makes it better. It takes a character that a lot of people didn't particularly care for, Cassian, uh, from Rogue One, from Rogue One, and made him so much better. Yeah. And it made a show for him. Out of the four shows that were coming out in the Variety uh, magazine, it was like a year or so ago. We had Ahsoka, uh, Obi Wan, Andor, and the Mandalorian. I remember seeing memes about. 
uh, you know, like it zooms into Cassian's face and it's like, uh, like he, he bro thinks he's a part of the team. Yeah. You know, yeah. What a wild thing that it became the best show out of those four, because what does Andor do? It brings us fantastic, uh, like, like a fantastic setting. It deep dives into the political intrigue and mix and mystique in the dark times that Rogue One offered to us. It takes like, it takes these core concepts of what makes a, a wonderful revolution story and throws it a, like right in our face, tells us why we should be mad that the Empire does what it does. It takes us and it, it, it reminds us why the Empire is meant to be feared. Mm -hmm. Because the Empire for decades has been ridiculed as like useless. Stormtroopers can't hit nothing. Like, and like no, no wonder they, they, they fell. But no, the Empire was in power for over two decades for a reason. You know, this this was the the oppression of of the grand plan Sith Imperative that was created for generations, millennia, put into action. Um, and the and these are the consequences of it. It is a it is a galaxy. Yes, it's not Star Warsy because it is a galaxy without light. The Jedi are gone. The Force does essentially doesn't exist anymore. So what are you gonna do without it? You find hope in others, in yourself, and you fight. That's why Andor's S tier. That's all I have to say. You make good points, and for the most part, I agree with you. But I will say, I've thought deeply about this. I do not believe Andor believes in it, but, but deserves to be an S tier for a few reasons. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll I, you got on your soapbox. I'll get on mine. I'll go ahead and be straight up. When the show debuted, I, I've always liked Andor. I really always have. But when the show debuted, the first three episodes, I was like, this is a little slow. I, I won't lie. I fell asleep in episode two for like five minutes. Like I was like in and out of sleep. I had to like smack myself awake. I was already tired, but that was one thing. And I was like, okay. I'm not locked in as I should be right now, okay? Uh, and not to say that I haven't fell asleep in, like, you know, it may be like a Bad Batch episode or whatever, but Bad Batch is in B. I think Andor is better than Bad Batch. The first three episodes are slow, and the entire show is very slow. Now, it's structured that way. It's meant to be that way. Some people critique be slow as being like a, you know, oh, like, this just makes it bad. It doesn't. It just means you just like faster-paced things, and that's okay. I like slow burn things. To me, Andor feels a lot like something like Blade Runner 2049, which is a film that you and I absolutely adore. Um, so the, I will say those first three episodes, they didn't completely hit with me until the finale. And I was like, all right, I'm intrigued to see where this goes. I did not keep up with Andor on a week to week basis. I didn't. That was the, one of the only Star Wars shows that I did not watch every week because the episodes are very, very long. They're an hour a piece. And that is unique to these shows. But I remember I watched i think i got through the first five episodes week to week i remember i watched episode five with you or four one of the two uh it was during the the hurricane that i was in and we watched it online um for the for the preceding weeks i did not keep up with it week to week i did not watch the aldani heist the week it came out i did not watch uh any of the narkina five stuff as it came out all those episodes had already come out i did not catch up until the very final arc and i was glad i did i was really glad i did but it did lose my interest there a little bit. You know, it was not something that I'm like, man, I cannot wait for this new Andor episode to come out. Another critique that I will say is it under it. I do think Andor underutilizes the universe that it is in. And what I mean by that is this is a critique that I think is completely fair is that there is a lack of alien species in Andor. And I think that's why that I think that alone would make, and, and I'm speaking for people that, you know, they, that believe this. It didn't bother me. I didn't even notice it the first time around. But now that I think about it, I was like, yeah, there's not really any, a, a whole lot of aliens. There's a few, but it's like, you know, you're in the Narkina uh, five prison, you know? And it's like, yeah, there's no aliens here. Like there's none. Like we, we and I, and I know, yes, the empire is, is racist. They do not like alien species. I'm like, <laughs> but the, I mean, we know that they use alien species to work their stuff. Like the Wookiees are the prime example. Um, so, you know, they, they will use species if it is, means, uh, output is, is, um, increased. So 
And, and I really do think that is a Tony Gilroy thing that they didn't use aliens. And I guess, you know, that it, it's also a little bit harder budget wise and stuff. So that is why I believe Andor, in my opinion, goes right below Return of the Jedi. I think Andor is, it, it is great. It is a great show that I think lately has gotten a lot of hate. And I think it is, I'm looking at all the shows here to make sure... Out of all the shows that Disney has direct, directly done, uh, I think it is the most cohesive and just on a quality level, the absolute best. You and I and some of our friends, we we like to talk about how like th there's a quote that Dave Filoni you know, has talked about to Sam Witwer, that it's good that Star Wars stories are different. Andor is a prime example of this. To me, Andor feels like a Star Wars novel come to life. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like a yeah. traditional project that would come to screen. And I think that's why it didn't always hit with people because those those novelizations, I mean, we're reading Plagueis right now. Like, I'll go and say, I don't think Plagueis is for everybody. It's dark. Like, it's, you know, it's oh, it's yeah, gritty. It's, again, politically charged like Andor it's very, is. It's very politically charged. We love that. Like, we talk about Phantom Menace. Like, we like the politics of Phantom Menace and all these other projects. Um, so that's where I feel, I feel Andor, at least for me, goes right below return of the jedi only because i think return of the jedi is also so quintessentially star wars and i i just don't in my mind see it passing return of the jedi um if it if we do put it in s tier uh here, here's my bargain with you if uh hold on let me let me let me framework this deal here first of all i will say <laughs> If Andor goes into S tier, it's it, to to me it, it is below Rogue One. I think Rogue One is it takes the the, the stuff that is taken from Rogue One to put into Andor uh, is is amazing. But Rogue One has more of the kind of little quirks that make Star Wars that I think Andor lacks from time to time, um, which mm -hmm. again isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's good that stories are different. But we're, if we're talking in the grand scheme of Star Wars, like you know, for example, my girlfriend, she I've got her into Star Wars, right? She did not like Rogue One. It was not her favorite. That, and that Rachel, shocked me. That, like, did, did she actually not like it, though? I don't think she disliked it. She was just like, this is just not my thing. Like, you know, huh. and, and I know and I know that yeah. that's, a, that's a that's a take, you know, and I'm like, wow. OK. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm not going to show her Andor, Ben, you know, because I'm like, if she's not going to like Rogue One, you're not going to like Andor. And, and that's the thing is, I think. And maybe this is an unfair criticism. I, you, maybe you can call me out on this. I'm like, but that is why, like, like because Andor's, you know, certain things that don't make it as Star Warsy as you said, or people say, like, that is why it just holds it back for me. I mean, I think I could be convinced that it is S tier, but like, you know, people like Tony, you know, his arguments and stuff, like, like. It, Tony, I love you, man. Some of your critiques are andor are a little unfair, but I get what you're saying, you know. Uh, and he's gonna DM me right after this or put a comment in there. It's fine, you can, <laughs> you're allowed to. We love you. Um, but like I understand where people are coming from that it's not, it doesn't yeah. it, it is it's different. That's the thing, is if you just had to describe andor, it's different. But it's doesn't different doesn't mean bad. That's the that's the cool thing, you know. Ahsoka is really different in the sense that it is super mythological and mystical, and I love it for that. Andor is not that. Andor is the complete absence of that, like you said, and that's what I love about it. It is political. It is the everyman boots on the ground, you know, going from alleyway to alleyway. The Empire looking in every corner, like it's really cool stuff but there's some things that i think hold it back from being s tier and one of those is its seeming lack of universality universality that's not a word but it's like it's yeah it's a nicher part you know but i don't and that's where i think i don't think it's a fair criticism to have um so that's that's just more of a side thing but for now i'm teetering like either like, if we put it at the top of A, I think Return of the Jedi has to go to S, or Return of the Jedi and Andor have to go to S. Like, I'm, like for, for me, I'm like, I, I'm like, can I put Andor above Return of the Jedi? And I just don't think I can. I just don't think I can. That's well, but but you felt but just just to clarify, 
I'm not like judging you at all, but mm. but like you did feel good about putting Rogue One above Return of the Jedi. You feel okay with that? Oh, that's tough. I didn't even think about that. Mm. I'm just I, I'm just trying to think about it because like I don't I I honestly didn't know that that was your experience with with Andor. I had I had either I forgotten about it <laughs> or or like you just didn't tell me. But dude, I was I mean I was uh. I was locked in every week. Really? I didn't I I didn't find it boring, you know, like it was a it was a slow burn for sure, but I mean, I was I was enthralled with with every episode. I think it was episode 2 where I knew I was like, dude, this is good, which ironically really? is the same episode that you fell asleep in. Yeah. Um so, yeah, that's a that, that is a, that is an interesting contra- contrast between us there. I, yeah, I just uh I just look at Andor as a project and I see its production value and I see what it does as a story. Um, and I think that's just why I love it so much. Mm-hmm. I think that it would be it would be a shame to, to undercut um, just how much of a of an artistic success it is. And I just can't wait for season two. I'm stoked. Um, but... I think I, I can. I, I think mean, I, and I feel bad as well because I had Clone, Clone Wars as my favorite show. You convinced me to bring it higher, and I'm convincing your favorite show to bring it lower. <laughs> it, it's interesting because, like, I Andor's my favorite show, but I'm not going to rank it higher than Clone Wars. Yeah, I, like on, on the tier. D- does that make sense? Because like, no, that, I, that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna rank it higher higher than the Clone Wars. I was thinking like low S, but it is it is hard putting it in front of Return of the Jedi and by proxy it's, Rogue One. It's uh, it's hard because it's like we have to weigh like, and I'm saying like it's like, this is why it's hard for us is because we have to weigh like our biases also with like quality and it's like on a qual if i was just doing a quality level strictly i mean andor would be the top of s because it is like one of the most beautiful looking shows the writing and that the dialogue is incredible like it's just yeah. in terms of a quality level it's so good like it is it is amazing um it's, it's superb i mean um, but it's I, it's the it's the the Star Wars thing on it, you know. It's it's like when people yeah. say like, "Oh, The Last Jedi is a good movie, but it's a bad Star Wars movie." And I'm like, um, I'm like, okay, like yeah, whatever. But like the they're like, Andor is not really like that. Where it's like, to me, I I think it is it is a great Star Wars project, um, but it's not a traditional Star Wars project. But again, that doesn't make it a bad yeah. thing. It's just everything on this list is I'm, I'm looking at everything everything on this list is like so star warsy Andor is kind of that oddball where it's it's not super star warsy but it adds a lot to star wars you know that's what's tough to I th- me yeah i think because like people people like i said before people get really caught up in the you know how star warsy is it you know and and then you also have those people that are like oh Andor is the best thing ever yeah. Every Star Wars thing needs to be like this, which I will assert that is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think what makes Andor so good is is that it adds yes. more mm-hmm. to the to the paradigm of like what makes Star Wars Star Wars. Yeah. Like it's different and that's great. I don't want everything to be like Andor. I just think it's interesting that it looks at Star Wars from a new light. But if you want to think about it this way, Star Wars has always been politically charged. Oh yeah. So if you wanna if you wanna take something like I don't know, uh let's say like the uh like 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 Gendy's Clone Wars, mm-hmm. right? That that uh that taps into the lightsaber fights and the big battles parts of Star Wars. That's what that's what that is all about. Yep. Um But Andor taps into the political intrigue of star wars so in a way it still is star warsy yeah i think people just get caught up over the fact that there's not a lightsaber in it or you know what what have you and i have heard the critique that you know there's not a lot of aliens in it um yeah there's some in the background but like there's not a lot but then i once thought well how many aliens are in empire strikes back 
really think about it. There's Chewie, there's Yoda, and then there's the Bounty Hunters, all of which are background characters that you see one time. Bespin doesn't have any alien characters. Bespin doesn't have any, Hoth, really any, like other, other than the Ugnaughts who are in one scene in the background. Like you get this, you get the, the, the big alien yeah. presentation in A New Hope. Um, but I mean, and as Return Star Wars Jedi, has, yeah, yeah and, and Return of the Jedi, as Star Wars has predominantly, I mean, as Star Wars has stated multiple times, the galaxy is predominantly human. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so like, I will agree. I think more aliens needed to be in Andor, but I, I think that when people that throw Empire. that out, I'm just like, well, how many aliens do we really see in other mm. Star Wars projects? Really? It's true. Um, because like you know Rogue One, I mean I, I guess like you said it was like a Tony Gilroy thing. We don't really see a lot in Rogue One either. We we see well, it when uh, you, well you see it when like uh, you're you're in big city areas and stuff and like places where the environment is is meant to be the focus. Mm -hmm. But we never really have any aliens like core members of the team. I mean like aside from Chewie, uh, in you know the the original trilogy. Yeah. You don't really have a lot of aliens, which I think is just really interesting. Well, you always um, see the most in animation because it's animated, yeah, more, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's animation. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, whereas, like, you know, it's harder to put people, you know, stuff a bunch of people in costumes, like, you know, with the acolyte. Like, I don't know if there's going to be any alien Jedi in that. Um, I, I say I think Rogue One has a lot of aliens. That's just my take. But like, in terms of like the rebellion and stuff, you've got like Bastan yeah. and uh, whatever those guys. Like, uh, one of them is like. I don't remember one of them. Um, and then you've got Saw Gerrera's band, and there's a ton of different aliens with them. Um, two tubes. I love you, two, two tubes. tubes. There's two of them. Did you know that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, where, so, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. I, I think what we have to determine between you and I is, first of all, does it go above Return of the Jedi or does it go below Return of the Jedi? That's not, Don't worry about the letter. Don't worry about the letter right now. We can adjust the letters if we need to. But does it go... Because I think we're both agreeing that it goes below Rogue One. I think we both like Rogue One better than Andor. I... This is the same case as the Clone Wars where I like Andor better than Rogue One. But mm -hmm. I think Rogue One should be higher in the tier list. Okay. Because if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Andor, I mean, if, if it wasn't for Rogue One, that like the precedence that Rogue One set, uh, that theme and vibe around Andor wouldn't exist. Yep. Um, so I have to give it credit for that. So I, when it, when something is put in S, it is not only a superb project, but it is superb for its iconicity and what it does for Star Wars as a whole. Um, when we're considering that, I find it hard to put Andor above Return of the Jedi because Return of the Jedi, you know, even though it has a weaker, you know, midsection and, and third act, in, at least in terms of Andor, Return of the Jedi is iconic. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, retroactively say let's go ahead and put return of the jedi in s tier to begin with okay because i think it should i think it should be in there i think it should maybe be at the bottom but i think it should be in there yeah okay um because you know like luke versus vader at the end i mean that's that's something i yeah. i can't I, yeah um the real question is do i want to put andor at the top of a or do we want to put it at the bottom of s because andor is a superb project is it superb in its iconicity? Because at the very least, it has brought a great deal of conversation into the Star Wars community. So mm -hmm. would you say that that's something that we that we should consider? I think so. But at the very least, if we want to go for our law of averages, we could put it at the top of A if you don't think it's worthy of S, which I understand. <sighs> it's tough, man. It's really tough, and I and I think it warrants a rewatch as well, because yeah. you know I watched it in kind of a weird, broken pattern. Um, I think Andor sets a new bar for what Star Wars could be. I mean, I think you know we we talk about this often with with our friends um, that like in a perfect world, I I kind of wish Andor's budget was 
allocated to Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, like uh, yeah. uh, something because like that that really is, does so much for Andor is its budget and how many episodes it has. Um, there is a fantastic amount of care that is put into Andor. Yeah. It's just, it's um, very meticulous in really, I mean, it's casting to its presentation, everything. Um, I mean, it's use of real world sets, which is unlike uh, the other projects that you heavily use the volume. Um, I just, thinking about the, 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 the heist, when you see like that, fantastic visual of like like the stars in the oh, sky my, you know it's one of my favorite shots um and uh the the scene of of one way out uh the Dude. the the specific scene at the at the end of the episode before that when Kino Lois says never more than 12 yeah. which is like that moment when you're like let's go like yeah. you, you get so excited so for that you get so pumped up the initial shock when when Cassian uh, shoots one of those guys at the beginning of the first episode, like oh, that yeah. that immediately sets sets the precedent for the show. Um, I mean, there is there is so much in that show that just makes me so giddy because of how great it is. Mm -hmm. And Nemec's manifesto, the scene where Cassian's standing in the rain, where he makes the decision the, the decision that he is going to fight and yeah. become a rebel. You know, yeah. like that that is just it's a rebellion story. And I think that, you know, the idea of rebellion against oppression has always been a core theme about Star Wars. Um, and so, man, I just, I'll put in an A if you really want to, but what do you say putting it at the bottom of S? Just because I put Return of the Jedi up there for you. <laughs> you know what? We're putting every project in S. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's go, baby! Except for Book of Boba Fett, sorry. Yeah, that's the only one that stays there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Bottom of S. All right. Below Let's go. Return of Jedi. I, 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 you go. You've swayed me enough. Yeah. Well, the, the, the big thing, yeah, was the aliens. But then it's like those first three episodes. Like I, I don't mind slow projects, and I don't mind, uh, I don't mind, you know, um, slower burns and and you know having to get the ball rolling. And um, I just think I wasn't maybe fully expecting it uh when it first yeah. started so like i'm it's i'm interested to see maybe it's something we should you know cover at one point uh maybe breaking it up into arcs watching you know because it's 12 episodes watching three three at a time episode by episode and uh, doing a retrospect of, of andor um because it's not I often that i re-watch a lot of the shows um like, I can't I, wait for season two, man. I'm going to go nuts. I, and that's the thing is I think it's also, oh, sadly, season two was delayed, but that's okay. Um, that maybe it would be something to go back and do a retro, maybe do a retrospect before and or season two comes out. Maybe prep in yeah. preparation. Maybe that's a good idea. Um, it's interesting because season two has the potential to either bump and or up or down. And like same same thing for Ahsoka and like you know yeah. Mandalorian and you know whatever else comes along, I think it would be good to do like a uh, updated. Yeah, like like an, an update at some point. I think yeah. that'd be a good idea. I think yeah, I think it's good because it's like you look at these projects here and uh, specifically um, Visions, Ahsoka, Andor, Mandalorian, uh, and Bad Batch, possibly Book of Boba Fett, Tales of the Jedi are all. Uh, I, I don't think Kenobi, but all those projects are still going. They still have, you know, further seasons. Bad Batch has a full season, so it'd be cool if, like, you know, uh, on, say, if we review the Bad Batch season three, we, at the very end, when we finish it up, be like, all right, so we're going to update it on our tier list. Where does Bad Batch, or where does Bad Batch as a full show go now? Um, it's, it's going, it's going on us if they introduce Delta Squad. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> if you give me a Bad Batch Delta Squad square up, bro. Oh. Oh, man. That is so good. Man, so good. All right. Well, we finished the tier list. And all right. I'm I'm quite pleased. Let's go back through. I'm going to list all of these uh, for audio listeners. Um, and let's let's reanalyze and, and make sure we feel good about certain things being placed where they are. So all right. starting from the top, we have The Empire Strikes Back at the top of S, followed by Revenge of the Sith, then Star Wars A New Hope, then Star Wars The Clone Wars, the TV show. Then Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Then Return of the Jedi. And lastly, Andor. In A, we have 
Gindy Tartakovsky's 03 Clone Wars, followed by Visions, then Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Rebels, and Ahsoka. Then we go on to B, Tales of the Jedi, Solo, The Mandalorian, Bad Batch, The Force Awakens, and The Clone Wars Movie. Then in C tier, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, The Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, and then moving on to D, the lone project in D. Oh, poor Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> there you go. Our baby, our baby Book of Boba Fett. <sighs> so here's, here's, I think this has been my dilemma, and I don't think I'm going to change anything. I, th- I feel confident in literally all of these decisions, Uh huh. but like the, there's something, there's this weird feeling that I'm like, man, should episode two, eight, and nine, like, should some of them go higher or lower? I, now, here's the thing is I don't like, I don't feel confident putting Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker high, higher. The question is, should they go lower above Book of Boba Fett? Um, I don't think uh. so. Because I, I don't think of those movies and go, bleh. I, I think of them and I go, eh, like, you know, I don't know. And that's meh. That's C tier. <sighs> it's. It's. Uh, well, you know that when I think of Rise of Skywalker, I, I go, bleh. But. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't like it. <laughs> but I, I, I also don't think. I don't know. It's. Uh, well. I just thought about the scene where Huck says, I'm the spy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could, I could, I mean, I initially wanted to put Rise of Skywalker in D, but you convinced me to put it in C. Um, yeah. But then honestly, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel fair keeping it in the same tier as Kenobi, Attack of the Clones, and Last Jedi. I don't know. To me, I bunch Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker together. Those, those movies are, are two peas in the pod of just like, Half, like <laughs> just like you know oh there's what's some, happening yeah yeah it's like they're so they leash off of one another in the sense that like they they leech off all the crap like that's that's what they it's because it's like with the last jedi it's like man like the the introduction of you know they don't fully say it but the introduction of of the dyad and ray and kylo's connection and even the stuff with Luke Skywalker and Snoke and all of that. But then it's like, dude, the, I mean, yeah, like I don't fully agree with the direction they took Luke Skywalker. I need to see, I need to see how he gets to that point. Like it's a very big, you know, assumption or jump to make for audiences to be like, yeah, Luke Skywalker is not how he is at all now. And we're not going to tell you why, except this one scene. And it's like, well, why, how did he get to that point? Like you got to explain how he got to the yeah. point where he would be. So even the, the thing is, is like, it's, they, they can't be like, Oh, well, you know, he's guilty. Cause he tried to kill his nephew and it, like, you know, or thought about it at the very least. And it's like, okay, you got to explain why, how he even got to that point because Luke Skywalker you know at least post Return of the Jedi wouldn't think that but anyway I'm getting back on the last Jedi tangent it's just like to me it's like I feel like I don't know I don't know man it's really hard because like you you're you're reigniting my problems with the last Jedi (laughs) um that like it feels like a character assassination of Luke Skywalker from time to time yeah I think Um, about like I mean you you brought up the I'm the spy thing, which made me go. I'm thinking of you know Rose being like, I saved you, dummy. It's not a you know the message of of saving what you love, not fighting what you hate, is is important. But it the way it was executed, the way it was represented, was in the stupidest way possible. I like that message, yeah. but it's like Luke Skywalker was doing that. That was the message. He was saving what he yeah. loved. We didn't need, you know, like. <laughs> It, it's the same thing as Luke uh, Skywalker freaking throwing the lightsaber. Out. Like, what is that? That's like, the MCU stupid. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm getting angry. I'm, I can't feed my emotions. Yeah, like I mean, the, the one time I was dissuaded from 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 that idea was that someone once you know reminded me that you know Luke tossed his own saber in front of Palpatine once. You know, Luke's never cared for lightsabers, but I think but it's a different. It's different. It, it's 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 different in that. 
The Force Awakens final shot was based off of this very emotional, you know, not passing the torch, but giving the torch back like we need you. And then the movie starts with like him just throwing it over him, like off to the side, passed off as a gag. If I were to do, like, I'm fine with with Luke not wanting to, to take the mantle. But if I were to have done that scene, I would have had Luke look at the lightsaber, look back up at Rey, look back down and just it would fall slowly out of his hands as it just hits the ground. And he looks at it despondently. Yeah, he you know? wouldn't. It's like that. The reason in Return of the Jedi why he throws the lightsaber is it's almost in like a slap of the in the face to Palpatine. It's not like I'm not gonna fight you. Like, and he's throwing it away. He's like, you're you're not gonna win. You know? Yeah. What warrants in- that kind of reaction with Rey? You know? It's like it's like you know he just throws it off like and then just kind of walks off. You know? Or it's like the idea of him just kind of like dropping it and then just kind of you know nudging past her. Uh, or even being like, at least saying something of like, you shouldn't have come here, you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, just in, something. It doesn't warrant him being like, <laughs> in in Return of the Jedi, when Luke throws the lightsaber, it's an act of defiance. I'm right. a Jedi, like my father before me. In in the Last Jedi, it's an act of spite. Yes, which which he's not. For one thing, he doesn't know Rey at all. So he he has and and also the reason why he's there is because he's a broken man. He's not spiteful like he's he's just broken. But they know? don't show it very um, well, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and like so 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 why is he just tossing it behind it it's played for a gag and that's the problem. Even I mean even a uh, they deleted the scene of Luke reacting to Han's death, like like trying to mourn his death. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's all right. Listen, we're 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 flaming we're flaming this movie right now. Like I, we can we can go into it in a retrospective. Um, let's just keep it for it is, where it is right now. I, yeah, I, I think I I think right now like it's no matter how much I dislike the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> And how much I dislike the choices made in The Last Jedi, it it doesn't hit the blech that Book of Boba Fett does, where yeah. I look at that show and I'm like, man, this is just, I mean, this is bad. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we said it earlier is like, you know, at the very least, The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, eh, you know, it does have some depth to it. I mean, you know, from in yeah. The Last Jedi with, with Rey and Kylo's kind of opposing arcs and the fact you know him killing snoke and um and then uh luke's arc i mean even though it's it's a weird starting point for him like i do like his arc i his death is meaningful and powerful um yes it's got some goof like there's goofy stuff surrounding it but that stuff like really hits and it on a concept uh it's awesome the rise of Skywalker, yeah. the same thing of like you know introducing the dyad and like i don't on paper hate the idea of palpatine coming back it's just not set up at all but like when i su- suspend that it's really cool you know the idea of leia leia continuing Rey's training because oh she also was trained as a jedi and the idea of exegol where there's this really ancient sith planet even older than like korriban you know like yeah. s- stuff like that as i'm and, like that you know the the scene of leia training and then the, the 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 lightsaber fight between Rey and Kylo, where they're like phasing in and out between their locations. So cool! I mean, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. I, I mean, that's such a great usage of, of the dyad dynamic there. It's um, it's yeah, those things. It's what I think prevent these projects from being bleh. Because Book of Boba Fett, yeah, like there's nothing remarkable about Book of Boba Fett. There's there, there and what is cool. ends up being impacting the good project down the line that being man the, the mandalorian so there's cool stuff in there but it's in you know, like like i said you know boba with the tuscans boba on a rancor like him fighting with mando like that's cool stuff even him fighting cad bane live action cad bane that's awesome but that good stuff just does not weigh the the the, the bad of the show mm-hmm. and the 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 just how poorly it was mishandled yeah um, Okay. So yeah, I think, I think I think this is where we're gonna sit at the tier list for now. So um, so here's what I'll say. 
looking at this list from the, the discussions we've had before we go into our chat pack and wrap up the episode. Chat pack! I love chat pack! It, and I know you do. You loved the question last time, remember? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, immediately looking at this or just the discussions that we've had, like, and, and I'll ask I'll ask you guys uh, as well to, to kind of help decide. And, and, but what do you think is the first maybe like retrospect that we should do uh, to maybe see if something should go a little bit higher or lower? Um, hmm. I I'd really like to do a solo retrospective. I was thinking the same thing. Man, this guy. Yeah, I love this guy. I love this guy. How you doing, you old fire? It's so good to see you. No, that's wrong movie. Wrong movie. Yeah, no, I no. <laughs> yeah, solo is is very. Uh, is, I think would be awesome, and I think solo gets yeah. uh, gets a bad rap for really no reason. Um, yeah, solo yeah. I think would be really good, and I also, I mean, I do plan on uh, rewatching Rebels next year if we both go about it, even if it's a se- like a mm-hmm. retrospective. Season one, right? That would be fun. That's a little bit more digestible. Um, yeah, I think that could be fun. Um, and then, you know, uh, Beyond the Dune Sea just did it. But I really would like for us to both go back and watch O3 Clone Wars because I think it's been a minute for you. And same here for oh, me, it has honestly. Been a very long minute for me. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I've watched the I've, I've watched the, uh, the, the Grievous Palpatine kidnapping, you know, every other week, right? But I, <laughs> I, I need to <laughs> I need to rewatch that, that series and yeah. get real grasp of it yeah so this is, so um, those are some good things to there but hey you guys let us know in the comments or dms however you you want is there something that maybe you really like or you don't like and you're like you need to get that lower oh you need to get it higher let us know because we would love to kind of go back and cover some of these project by project and and really get into the dirt and the weeds of yeah what how the real the in you know the little things of these projects so um tell us why you think book of boba fett needs to be an s <laughs> it trumps all and the thing is i know there is one this, this always happens remember when we were playing little little story time here remember we were playing movie battles too and we were like is there one character is there some guy out there that just loves rosh pennon from jedi academy <laughs> yeah, yeah and yeah, literally yeah. 10 minutes later a guy devoted to role playing as <laughs> rosh pennon showed up in a server and i was like we found him cole we found him surely there is a guy out there that is like book of boba fett is peak star wars i know it exists maybe it's you i'm i'm gonna look it up after this episode because <laughs> i i just want to see because I know that there were, and and you know what I'm I'm gonna say this like since, since we're at the end of our tier list here, I'm just going to preface that I think that is what makes Star Wars such a beautiful thing because you like there there is it, there was one project where that is someone's favorite. Yep. And I think that that's amazing. I'm not the type of per- like if if you think Boba, Book of Boba Fett is S here, I don't agree. But I'm so happy for you. All you right. Know, like yeah. I, yeah I I I love that that is your favorite thing, right? So, yeah, I just think that it's really cool. You know, like, Star Wars is for everybody. Everyone um, has their own Star Wars. There was a, a comment yeah. last week, which I didn't agree with, but it was a really cool discussion, um, and I'm failing to remember uh, your username. I apologize. But he was like, I love Rise of Skywalker. Like, I think, yeah. like, he's like, this is, like, to me, it is pure Star Wars through and through. Like, you know, uh, and I was like, wow, like, that's crazy. It's like, I almost wish that was the case for me. Like, and you know, I, I do enjoy Rise yeah. of Skywalker more than you, but it's like, but it's awesome that the fact that like Rise of Skywalker, you know, does hit for you like that. Um, yeah. I think that that's so cool. I'm, I'm so glad that that movie does that for, yeah. for you, you know, like, no, I'm not, I'm not angry. There, there's no point for me to be mad about it. Again, like what I said, like during the Ahsoka show, why are you mad? You know, yeah. like, I don't, I don't have any reason to be mad if your favorite movie is Rise of Skywalker. More power to you, dude. I mean, like, I we've got Revenge of the Sith and S tier, and some people think that that is hot garbage. So, you know, like, that's... It, everyone's got their own opinions, you know? It's true. Don't come after Revenge of the Sith, though. I'll come after you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't come, kidding. After, don't, don't come after Revenge of the Sith, guys. Yeah, I love Revenge <laughs> of the Sith. All right, I'm getting the chat pack. All right. Um, right. Let's hope we get luckier than last week. Just the money. 
Uh, we're gonna do, you know what? 38, in honor of 1138. Boss? <laughs> Isn't that good? It's, I mean, it's, it's a funny discussion. Okay. Han Solo says about his Tauntaun, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> what do you think a Tauntaun smells like? <laughs> Nothing less than wet dog. Yeah. Um, no, that's really a really good <laughs> example. <laughs> I I really just think that that Tauntaun and it's weird because I've never mentioned this to you. I've pretty much always thought that since I was a kid. I was like, yeah, it smells like a wet dog. Yeah. You know, uh I yeah, that's that's it. This is a random thought. I completely agree with you. We'll just spin off of this for a little bit. Uh, when Han cuts open the Tauntaun, I have always thought the inside of a Tauntaun looked like hash browns. <laughs> like, 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 not, you're not like the, like the, like the chopped up hash browns, but like when you get like a hash brown patty or whatever they're called, like, <laughs> and you open it up and the, you see the inside, like the potatoes of the inside, I've always been like, mmm, yummy. Like, cause it, it looks like... I, I always thought it looked like, uh, like macaroni. Um, so Yo, ta -ta yeah, macaroni. I think it, but no, you're, you're right, dude. Tauntaun. -ta Tauntaun hash browns in universe Star Wars food? <laughs> I don't know how that would work because th that would definitely be protein and hash browns are like potatoes. But hey, if you want to sprinkle some Tauntaun bits on ha your hash tons, you you want some hash tons with your with your space waffle? <laughs> yes, please. Oh man, I love Star Wars food. Little little side tangent here because somehow we always end up getting into food. Are we just hungry all the time? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm hungry. It's true. I could go for some right now. I could eat. Uh, well, I did go to Galaxy's Edge uh, in the meantime between our last episode and now, and I took some awesome pictures. Um, I'll try to post some at some point. My dad and I went, but uh, one morning we ate at the Ronto Roasters. Um, and uh, for anybody who remembers on the Thanksgiving episode, I was super interested in space waffles with muja sauce. That was Kanan Jarrus's mm -hmm. favorite. Well, I didn't quite get that, but I got pretty close because at the Ronto Roasters for breakfast, they have um, this little fruit, kind of like diced fruit sticks, almost kind of like a, kind of like in like celery or carrots when you, you have like, have them with like wings and stuff, but it was, it was fruit. So it was like, you know, dragon fruit and watermelon and pineapple and, and there was cucumber in there, I think, but it was covered in muja sauce. And I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I was like, I ate it and it was delicious. So, um, so yeah, but I'm waiting for the Tauntaun, man. I'm waiting for the wet dog Tauntaun. I'm waiting for the, for the hash tons, please. Please do. Please. Can I please get a hash ton? What do you think a wampa smells like? Probably iron, like blood. Ooh. Well, I will say, actually, I don't know if that's the correct answer because in the Empire Strikes Back uh, short story, that Wampa was starving for weeks. Like, he and he was hungry. So, I don't know if he would smell like blood, but especially when Luke ran into him, he definitely smelled like blood. Like, um... Yeah. I Honestly, though, probably Wampas smell pretty similar to Tauntauns if they're both natives. Yeah. Probably, probably kind of smell like a... a zoo... You know, like yeah. just that zoo scent. Yeah, I don't know if it would make it better that they're frozen or not. Uh, probably, probably worse. Cause I mean, like, wouldn't they? Isn't there like, kind of some? Well, would there be condensation? Like, would they be like kind of like wet? You know, be like wet dog. Basically? If you're like, if you're like in the cave or in base, like I think they would be wet. But if you're like out in the snow, like you wouldn't be able to smell them because like think they're just yeah. frozen. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. Scientists tell us in the comments yep. below what does a tauntaun smell like, and do you uh, want hash tons? Taun and do you want hash tons? Uh, hashtag hash tons. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna post. I'm gonna like when we post like the announce it on social media this episode. I'm going to put hashtag hash tons. Well, hashtag it, hash tons. Uh, shout out to all the shout out to all the tauntauns out there. Um, <laughs> grinding down to the front. Grinding in the frozen wastes of Hoth. <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. 
of Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching wherever you may be. We hope that you had a fantastic holiday season and that you go into the new year very similarly. Um, follow us. What's your New Year's resolution? Let us know. Yeah, yeah, let us know. Especially if it has to do with Star Wars. Um, you can follow us at Mortis FM on Instagram. You can follow me at Shradester8. Follow Colt at the.cosmic.drifter. Yes, you can. Um, I guess you should say check out the second, not second, third episode uh, of the, the. No, second episode. Second episode of Tales with from the Archives. Sorry, am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? Did did we do? No, we that? didn't. No, 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 no. Yeah, because because the first one was like the first three chapters. Yes. Yep. And that was like the the introductory thing. Yeah. So ch- check out uh check out the second episode. We're getting of uh Tales from the Archives coming up on uh December 29th. Yeah. So it should be right? if you're listening to this. The day it releases should be tomorrow. We're going to be at 5 p.m. EST, and we're covering chapters 4 through 15 of Plagueis, if you are keeping up with it. It is phenomenal. Um, So I have three more chapters left. I'm slacking. I'm slacking, guys, but it's really good. Uh, Join us on either our channel or Beyond the Dune Sea, Diamond Figs, or Star Wars Sith. Any of our channels, be there or be square. You got anything else to say? Oh, only one. Just to, you know, make sure I get it out there. Mm-hmm. May the force be with you. Always. And we will see you in the new year. <laughs>